Don't you dare underestimate the power of the social stone. Our publisher made sure we were prepared for an encounter with you. Okay, guys, stay close to me. Pay attention to your surroundings, and for the love of God, don't be a hero. <laughs> this seriously maybe leave the hero business for the vets newbie ah oh, shit see not so tough after all boys so i just spent the last four days editing that intro i've not eaten properly i've not slept and i've not showered for two weeks but none of that matters because it's finally time to actually record the niche topic that nobody gives a shit about surely that 60 hours worth of editing won't be a giant waste of my time right do something in german please Today, we're going to be talking about a pet peeve of mine when it comes to old and modern MMORPGs. That means I can finally wash my mouth out after praising Final Fantasy XIV and do what I enjoy the most, farming downvotes for absolutely no reason at all. But before we get into that... Our patrons and I would love for you to grab yourself a go by Gola, because I've been worried about the visual clutter in Ashes of Creation all the way back during pre-Alpha 1. Yes, it feels like that was the Stone Age at this point, but the spell effects in this game have always been blinding to our retinas, and things only seem to be getting worse. I predict as we begin to see some of that more group gameplay with the upcoming world boss showcase i fear we will be dreading how the game will look with more than four players casting spells and i want to discuss this with you all today and hopefully preemptively give some feedback for intrepid when they eventually get around to recording this month's showcase probably 30 minutes before the actual live stream starts now with all that bollocks out of the way let's begin So as technology has advanced and graphics fidelity has reached new standards, MMOs have become more and more immersive. One of Ashes of Creation's major selling points is the fact that it is utilizing Unreal Engine 5's Nanite and Lumen tech to push graphics to the next level. But I don't play MMOs for graphics. In fact, I don't play any games for their graphics. I don't need realistic, high quality graphics to be immersed. It's nice, don't get me wrong, but when I look at games with insanely good graphics, I think to myself, but how much time did they actually put into making the game actually fun? Valheim is, in my opinion, one of the most immersive games ever made, and I'm sure a few of you kids out there are scratching your heads right now and thinking, uh, isn't Valheim that pixel game with polygon vikings? And to that I'd say to you, you sicken me. But this is touching on art style rather than the quality of graphics. You can of course bypass all graphical requirements by having an appealing art style. However, this isn't what I want to touch on today. 
We'll come back to this topic in a video later in the month because I suspect we're going to start seeing solutions to this in Ashes of Creation as 2023 rolls through. What I want to discuss today is the visual clutter that I brought up earlier. As you'll notice throughout 90% of the footage today, I'll be freezing the gameplay to highlight my points because this is very important to me. Visual clarity during your moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is one of the most important parts of playing an MMO. When you're constantly barraged by flashbangs through any content, you're not only smothering your beautifully crafted world, but you're also denying a lot of important information during combat. Having motion blur or spells that cover 90% of your screen adds nothing to anything. Nobody is praising it for looking amazing. Nobody is going around and saying, holy shit, did you see Ashes of Creation's blinding spells? I'm so glad that they turned that bloom up to max just to burn the last few of those cells out of my retinas. No, uh, they're just getting annoyed because it's covering up key animations that should be the focus of the gameplay. Now, there is a debatable way to solve this by using sliders so that the players themselves can choose what level of flashbang that they want, but I think this is a lazy solution to a problem that shouldn't even exist. And allow me to explain why. The reason I think sliders for spell effect intensity are simply not good enough is because of the core nature of an MMORPG. When you're playing a massively multiplayer online role-playing game, you can't expect everyone to be fiddling around with the settings just so they can see what they're doing. It, it makes no sense. Final Fantasy XIV is a prime example of spell effects completely and utterly burning out your retinas and almost every single video online for all raid bosses are a complete and utter cluster of unreadable mess. Massive arrows telling you where to stand, blinding white beams on the floor, motion blur out the wazoo. It's a mess and no amount of settings is going to fix this problem. This is a core issue with the way 14 presents their encounters, aiming for a high spectacle that, in my opinion, is more of a hindrance than it is immersive. Is it good to expect your raid or group to change their settings just so they can see what the hell is going on? No, I I don't think so at all. This problem is amplified massively in a open world setting. Most of Ashes of Creation's content is open world and subject to interference, random encounters, and the odd assistance that our currently popular MMOs no longer have. But the thing is, half the players around you are not going to be informed. Players like us will obviously have the settings at the correct intensity, but we are such a small minority. Many players players are just going to be casuals, completely unaware that settings even exist to reduce the intensity of spells and they just take the game at face value. The information these players have compared to others compared to us will be vastly inferior because they're being flashbanged every single nanosecond. How many mechanics are people reacting slower to simply because it's hidden behind an overbloomed lightning bolt? Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying intensity settings shouldn't exist, but in my opinion, the max setting should be 100% readable even in raid-sized content. But now, nah, you bold, majestic bringer of copium, what about turning off other player spell effects and just seeing my own? Well, that's great and all, but what's the point of a massively multiplayer online role-playing game if you're changing the settings to simulate simulate playing solo. One of the major appeals of an MMO is that epic feeling of fighting a raid boss with your friends and toggling off everyone else's spells except your own is again a solution to a problem that shouldn't even exist. Ashes of Creation is fundamentally designed with teamwork in mind and their combo debuff system simply wouldn't work if you could toggle off everyone else's spell effects. There's absolutely no need for lightning spells to bloom as much as they do. There's absolutely no need for weapon swings to obscure that much of the screen. There's absolutely no need for explosions to hide important animations just because it looks pretty. Why spend all this time crafting a beautiful world that people want to immerse themselves into when the gameplay is burning out your retinas?
Right from the get-go, this MMO has been critiqued for its spell effects, and I've been right there with them. I did think the spell effects back during Alpha 1 were very mediocre, but an Alpha is an Alpha. After all, it's not very fair to critique the graphic standards of a testing phase that was always meant to just be a back-end test. Throughout 2022, Intrepid have shown over time that they've improved significantly with Unreal Engine 5's tools, and their newly hired, talented spell effect artists have most certainly done a great job. However, as Alpha 2 draws in, I feel like the game should begin to represent the standards they're actually aiming for, and uh, as it currently stands, it's way too much. I even mentioned this during their very first weapon showcase, saying that the trail on the greatsword is far too bright. It's completely unnecessary for it to draw this much attention. I get that you're aiming for some form of impact behind the weapon, but there are ways to do this without a bright, blooming yellow light. Aren't we using colours to represent the classes? So why is a weapon giving off a bright yellow light when it should be a basic white trail effect similar to what you showed with the dagger. Additionally, you did mention that you want to represent the intensity depending on the level of the weapon, but you guys need to consider what the end result will look like in a mid to end game massively multiplayer setting. Isn't this what Ashes of Creation is all about? Bringing back that massively multiplayer to the genre with epic sieges and world bosses? We're only seeing this in a single player and small group setting right now. Imagine when we have 10 fighters all swinging their weapons at a raid boss, or 8 diverse classes all firing their spells within the corridors of a dungeon. I'm sure you'll notice this when you record that world boss showcase for us. So I implore you, you need to begin looking at intensity settings before that showcase. Even spend a little time showing them off if you've got them ready, and explaining the intensity settings in general because these flashy lights blinding your gameplay doesn't make your gameplay look appealing to players who want MMORPGs. You need to tone this down. MMOs need to be 100% readable even at max settings. Now this is one of them rare times where I'd really like to call upon your guys' opinions on this down in the comments because I think this is a very important part of the development cycle to nail early on. Setting standards now before all the spells begin getting fleshed out will save so much development time in the long run. If you're spending time designing these flashy spells just for the louder majority to give feedback later and then they end up getting cold anyway is counterintuitive to the development cycle. Many people have expressed their distaste for the over-the-top spell effects in the modern era of MMORPGs. Intensity settings are not good enough and I personally think it's a complete lack of understanding on the developer's side where they're prioritizing graphics over the gameplay because after all, pretty graphics sell, don't they Intrepid? In my opinion, the spell effects we saw during the tank showcase, although high quality, they make your beautiful game look like ass and it's completely unnecessary. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO and my opinion means nothing without yours in the comments below. And as always, I want to thank my patrons. You guys are those blinding spells that burn out my retinas. Without your support, this balding middle-aged man wouldn't be able to live his dream of talking shit on the internet. If you made it to the end of the video, surely it's worth giving a like. And if you're not one of the 80% who haven't already, why not go ahead and subscribe? And I'll see you in the next one because you're high on copium.